Danny LeBeau. We're back to the fourth revolution. We'll throw out stocks for your portfolio of the future. Today, this side, uh, this market is really punishing us, especially those stocks of the future with high growth names being, you know, capitulated over the last couple weeks. We're seeing a bounce right now that uh, the people are wondering, is it another dead cat bounce? We've seen three of so far this year with um, with S&P 500 fooling investors three separate times since uh, 2022 began. Um, and now, you know, retail investors have finally started exiting the market, surrendering, so to speak, in a, a capitulation move last week following the hotter than expected CPI report. But people are, are considering the fact that this, uh, you know, overdone panic that we're seeing from retail investors is marking the bottom for short sellers as the, the ostensible fuel driving this, this market lower is, uh, is finally being exhausted. So let's take a look at the charts, take a look at the opportunity here as we uh, deliberate whether this is truly is the bottom or we have more markets volatility to come. This is the S&P 500 futures chart since the beginning of the year. You can see kind of been just downtrending with with, you know, these bounces that have, have caught a lot of uh, retail investors. The fact that China might be looking at a declining economic environment in the face of these latest COVID restrictions. Um, and this has caused a lot of fear in the markets to, uh, you know, the second largest economy to see this kind of slowdown, seeing their their unemployment rate raised to 6.1. And they saw consumer spending fall 11.1 percent in April compared to the year prior. And now investors are wondering if, if this is going to be a echoing effect, should I say, rippling into the U.S. economy. And that has been the cause of our latest downtrend here. We had the, um, the invasion of Ukraine obviously creating a ton of chop and uncertainty as it, you know, it creates this environment with uh, with energy and oil that is inflationary in nature and it's causing huge implications in Europe, which is causing that economy to suffer more than ever with inflation spiking to uh, to levels not seen in 40 years, just as the U.S., um, so let's, let's talk about each of these dead cat bounces here. And these are kind of ploys from Wall Street to to lure retail investors like ourselves into this market um, only to uh, to throw them down further, obviously catalyzed by headlines. As I said, there's been an endless number of headlines that, uh, that could be a sell. And each of these big bumps has actually been correlated with one of the, the Fed's meetings and, you know, Jerome Powell's market soothing words in his post uh, his post meeting press conference, which continues to give us optimism, you know, in the latest the latest press conference back in May, he talked about the fact that we're we're looking at a, a plausible, uh, you, you know, soft landing, which is which was very confident in his tone. But unfortunately, the CPI report on uh, on last Wednesday kind of caused this market to uh, to lose its faith in Jerome's soft landing narrative, as it, it illustrated that there is no real slowdown in inflationary pressures, as they were looking for a third consecutive month of deceleration. And this isn't negative inflation growth; this is just slowing inflation month over month. And they didn't get it, unfortunately. Uh, people are worried it could turn into stagflation, and this has caused. The QQQ, so the Nasdaq 100, to uh, to fall 30 percent, as much as 30 percent off the highs it hit back here in back here in November, and we kind of hit this uh, 161.8 percent Fibonacci golden ratio. Uh, this is drawn from the highs and lows of the pandemic sell-off. So this is why a lot of people are calling a bottom because we have some strong supports. We've got oversold levels here. And um, and this is just temporary, right? Because we were, I'm talking about short sellers exiting, which means they're buying back their shares, which they had a negative position on prior, as uh, as the capitulation of retail investors, which exited uh, ostensibly, they said 1.9 billion in outflows following that CPI report on Wednesday, and this is this is right after the biggest inflow in history from retail investors, and they have. They've always had a penchant for high growth, and Arc Kathy Wood's Arc Innovation ETF here has been kind of their uh, their go-to ETF. Despite losing, you know, close to seventy percent of its value this year, has seen billions in inflows, um, and this has kind of been the bellwether for retail investors as far as where they're putting the money and what kind of action they are they're participating in. And what they saw last week was capitulation, like I said, and that catalyzed the short covers. As you know, the exhausted sellers 
come out. But growth-driven NASDAQ 100 was down over 30% off its highs, which it hit last November. The S&P 500 just barely bouncing off that bearish level, that bear territory threshold right off, you know, 20% off the highs it hit the first trading day of the year, actually. Um, so, you know, we are holding these, uh, these, these levels with bulls still coming into play. Like I said, a lot of the short sellers have exited. So it might be an opportunity here to dive into your favorite stocks. And what I've been doing throughout these, you know, dead cat bounces or false bottoms, so to speak, has been averaging down. And that is the, really the only way to effectively enter the market at this point with chop being, you know, considerably unknown when you're looking at the, the broader geopolitical and economic climate that we're looking at here, which continues to flood headlines with adverse news. And the markets, you know, obviously respond negatively with high growth being hit the hardest, but high growth names have really come into a evaluation point that can't be ignored with Kathy Woods, ARK Invest, ETF falling, you know, over 65% year to date and down close to 80% from the highs it hit last February. So I'd be looking at a lot of these names to uh, to start averaging into. And I'm looking for profitable companies at, at high growth measure, um, or at least companies that are that are expected to be profitable either this year or next year as interest rates rise and the cost of growth increases. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, guys, don't forget to check out zaxcom promo. Um, and I'll see you guys. Uh, see you guys next time.